Hey all, Rob here. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so I know when future videos are out. And this topic's a little different. It's a little more real world. It is about the Mandela Effect. Watching Batman 89 for the first time in years. And also, what are these MEs uh, going on? And why I think there is some circumstantial proof that it does exist. So check this out. So they really don't play Batman 1989, the Michael Keaton first one, much. And I've not seen it, the whole thing, in probably close to 20 years or more. In terms of sitting down and watching the whole thing beginning to end. And so I was watching it, right? Batman 89. And it held up better than I thought, you know, years later, thinking about it. And it was, it's not my favorite Batman movie, but it is uh, up there as one of, definitely one of the better ones. And it brought a lot to the table of making Batman more serious and more respected with audiences again. But there's a scene I clearly remember. I was able to, to know scenes that, even though I've not seen it in decades, that I... I because of my young memories, when I first saw it, that I could spot it, I know it, and I know the scenes were there, you know, some th certain things said, and I know for a fact that you're like, oh, this scene is here, and this happens there, you know what I mean. So, there's a scene near the end where the Joker has his parade and he's throwing money to the crowd, okay? And this is before the balloons with the poison gas are caught by Batman and he flies him away. So he's throwing the money to the crowd and the crowd's going crazy trying to get the money, right? And then the scene cuts, you know, what happens. Uh, Batman gets the balloons, he saves the crowd... And then the Joker shoots the bat plane down, and then they go to Cathedral, etc. But what I clearly remember, and it's not in the movie, and if you watch it now, it's not in the movie, is there was a scene where a civilian uh, gets the money and shows it to us, the crowd. In other words, we the camera sees what the civilian picked up and it is the Joker's face on the money. Meaning it's counterfeit, meaning it is fake money. And the only thing is, I don't remember if the civilian made a comment about it or if it was just the civilian picking it up and us, the audience, seeing that it was fake. So I'm not sure if the civilian made a comment but it's not in the movie. Without that scene in the movie, you don't know if the money is real or you don't know if the money is counterfeit because there's no close-up shot, there's no voiceover, there's no indication that it's fake. Even though uh, there's no evidence it's fake, so you have to assume it's real. But even though in the movie earlier, the Joker said he wants his face on, uh, I'm not sure what was it, as I'm making this video, was it a dollar bill or whatever, but he says he, he basically wanted his face on money. And so by having that scene at the end, having his face on money, it fulfills what he said earlier in the film, and that it was counterfeit money, because he put himself on it. But that scene is not in the movie us seeing the counterfeit bill. And I clearly remember it from growing up. Why would I think that it's counterfeit money? Why would I think the idea of his face on the money? Why would I imagine that uh, from my early memories? Why would I piece that together unless I had seen it?
in the movie. And this is why I think the Mandela effect, this stuff is real and not uh, just like fake memories or whatever they want to make an excuse. Well, first of all, those who are saying it's just like you misremembered stuff, I think personally those are the people who say that are covering up the truth. In other words, it's like saying, it's a, it's a way to dismiss you, saying like, oh, if those people believe in the Mandela effect, uh, no, you're just misremembering things. So it's a way to dismiss you and your argument because they're covering up the truth. And, which I, we'll get to. And I saw one of these, like, just like alternative media, one of these respectful guys that I've, I've, I watched like the radio show, and he said, you know, this stuff is real. You know, it's not fake. This stuff is going on, this Mandela effect. And you want to know why I think it's real? Some circumstantial evidence is we keep seeing stories in cases of all of these MEs happening, right? How come in the 1990s, the 1980s, uh, the early 2000s, we didn't have Mandela effects getting 1970s things wrong, getting facts from the 1960s wrong, or getting facts from the 1950s wrong, or the 40s, or the 30s. We didn't have, when we were growing up in the 1980s or the 1990s, we didn't have misremembering stuff from the 1960s. We didn't have TV shows where we misremembered misrem it for the 1940s or the 1950s. We didn't see movies in the 1960s. In other words, in the 1980s, 1990s growing up, we didn't misremember stuff from the 1970s in terms of movies or the 1960s in terms of movies. We knew the stuff. How come this Mandela effect, only about, let's say 2010, give or take, somewhere around there, how come that's when things changed? How come we start remembering the past differently around 2010, give or take? But before then, we didn't have this stuff. It's only in the past decade or so has this topic come up. You know, when you think about it, you see all these new cases... And it's just like I said, this is some circumstantial evidence. When you grow, growing up in the 1980s or the 1990s, you didn't misremember a lot of bunch of movies or a bunch of TV series from the 1940s or the 1960s or whatever. You knew it. So how come nowadays all of these films and all of this stuff is being misremembered? Remember the Bible quote? The lion lays down with the lamb. You know that, right? I'm sure you've heard it. If, if you're Catholic, you grew up on that. The lion lays down with the lamb. Well, if you look in the Bible, it says now, the wolf lays down with the lamb. The wolf? Yeah. And I think, don't quote me on it, because I've not 100% seen it, but I think the word uh, unicorn is in the Bible. And the word matrix. Not like the movie Matrix, but just the word itself, matrix. But I'm not sure about the context. Unicorn, in all the times growing up, all the times I read the Bible, look through it, read chapters here or there, I never remember unicorn, the word being in a Bible. And I never remember the word matrix, which sounds very modern. It sounds like a very modern word. I don't remember the word matrix ever being in the Bible. But you gotta check that out. The wolf lays down with the lamb? No, nah, it's always been the lion. So what's going on? You know, wh wh how is this happening? Well, what I think personally is... Well, first of all, nobody know, really knows. Some people said... Remember in 2012, the world was supposed to end? Remember that? Maybe in... And then you had the Fukushima stuff around then? What if the world did end and those people who tried to save our reality sent us... In other words, if... Let's say this world we live in is a simulation, which some say might be true. Let's just say we're in a simulation, our existence. Let's say the simulation was going to end 
the world was going to end. And to preserve it, they brought us over to another simulation, uh, which would be weird. Or someone is messing with reality, maybe it's CERN, maybe it's the Collider, and messing with reality, they've, like, we, we're merging dimensions or different realities are combining. But here's what I think, you know, and I'm not sure this has been brought up. Uh, let's say this is a simulation, okay? Let us just imagine for a moment what we know is life and reality is not what we really think it is. Let's say it's something close to a simulation. So let's just take that idea, okay? So what would happen, so, you know, try to pay close attention here. What would happen if reality is a simulation and there are people who can hack and change that reality, therefore changing the simulation? So it's basically like having the reality gem and you could actually change reality and what is real. Therefore, you could change stuff in the past. You could change the Bible. You could change movies. I've heard even human anatomy has been changed. Because if, if you can literally hack the simulation and the reality then you can change it and you could change it to how you want and therefore the past gets changed in terms of everything that you considered the past gets changed of how they want it and so if you could hack reality then you could basically do what you want, anything in it. And what I think w what is happening with movies, for example, is they're probably experimenting low end, you know, just like running experiments and they're doing simple stuff like movies and other things just to see if it works, just to see if they can do this. So it's basically experimenting with reality. Or maybe they opened a portal, the dimensions are shifting, and it's just spinning out of control slowly. So who knows where this could go 100 years from now or 200 years from now. Maybe it is just spiraling out of control on its own, which is another possibility. But what's happening is those of us who lived in the past, who remembered this stuff, we either existed in the old world or universe, and the people who are in the present universe we shift to don't remember it because their experience was different, and our experience from the old universe was different. So that's why we remember stuff differently. Or maybe because even though they hacked and changed reality. They couldn't change the people's memories of all of us. Because some of us remembered what it used to be. Even though others don't remember it. Others who experienced it do remember it. And that's why we, we remember how reality was before. Where the lion lays down with the lamb where we saw the, that the Joker had counterfeit money. In other scenes, you know, it's just... Whatever's going on, you know, those in power, those in charge, they will never tell us the truth. You know that, don't you? Those who actually know what's going on, or controlling it, or, or are in on it, They'll never tell us to people what they're really doing. Never. And 
So, is reality being hacked? Is our universe is merging? There's so much, you know. And we're being kept in the dark. Not being told the truth. And that's just the way it is. But I think that evidence of the more these Mandela effects you see, and the fact that we didn't have this in the 1990s or 2000s or whatever, and all these movies being changed. I'll give you another one. Remember, I would see it in the bookstores, you know, growing up. Remember the author, I think it's a woman, it's called Danielle Steele. I think you remember that, right? You've probably seen it in the bookstore. Steele, S-T-E-E-L-E. -E -E, because it was very odd spelling, right? It's not Daniel Steele. It's Daniel Steele, I think. S-T-E-E-L. There's no E at the end after the L. So I remember the odd spelling. It was always Daniel Steele. S-T-E-E-L-E. -E -E. Now it's just like S-T-E-E-L. It's just, it's just, you know, we'll see what happens. But I think reality has shifted. There has been changes. And we're not going to be told the truth, like I said. So that's the video. Kind of different talk here. Let me know what you think, if you liked it. And so that's it for now. Don't forget to comment, subscribe. Stay safe, my friends, and I will talk to you later.